Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lori. And if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, welcome. Um, I'm glad you're a frequent offender. And for those that are coming back, thank you for continuously being a frequent offender. It means a lot to me. We're going to start out with the word for the day. And it's not duck. I'll let you put whatever letter you want on the first part of that little uck. Uh, the ducks came from Mystic in an order, and I thought it was pretty appropriate. My daughter came home with this. She works from, she works for, excuse me, Sparrow Health Systems. She works very close with a nurse practitioner. And the nurse practitioner came up to her and said, um, hey, Lauren, you look like you could use this today. This is the last one I have to give. And use your imagination. <laughs> she came home. And she said the same thing to me. Mom, my nurse practitioner gave this to me because it was the last one she had to give. And I'm giving it to you because it's the last one I have to give. And I died for so many reasons. I was laughing so hard. And, you know, here's my beautiful young daughter um, giving this to me as a grown adult. And as a child, I was like, oh, no, we're, we're not using naughty words in this house. You're going to get raised right like I was, and you're going to, you know, watch your mouth. And now I'm like, you know what? You're an adult. Do what you'd like. I raised you with good intentions and everything. And if you have zero ducks to give, uh, I understand it because adulting is hard, and I hate it too at times. So um, here you go. Um, zero ducks to give. We're going to move on. But there's your chaos for the day. And... Sorry for the hand, but here you go. We're going to put that over there so you don't hopefully not see what the ducks are really revealing. But again, your imagination, you probably already have a good idea if it's my channel. All right. Um, I'm going to show some things real quick just because it's not my normal channel. And I am trying to get used to this over the head, over the shoulder boulder holder thingy and um, try to film this as best I can. So bear with me. You're gonna see my hands go cha-cha-cha. I have a bandaid on because I have an ugly callus, so you get to look at cute little Grogu. I stopped at the Dollar General here in town, which in my town, you blink, you miss it. It's kind of gone, but we have a Dollar General, not a Dollar Tree. I have to go like, you know, across the seas in the prairie to find the Dollar Tree that's closest to me. So Dollar General doesn't have us coolest stuff I think some of their stuff's cool but some of their stuff's like you know I, I need to go to the Dollar Tree so I can get this shit cheap sorry not sorry sorry for the language they had a BOGO on their Easter stuff and I got lucky I came across this little sign and it's like um the one I found at Walmart that was on clearance and you flip it type of thing and it I think it will be easy to take apart and spray paint it if I want to so choose to do so but I thought it would be really cute for maybe some of Shannon Christine's little freebies that she does it might be just the right size if I go with a small account fabric but um I got a purple one and because it was BOGO I picked up a blue one and gave the blue one to Jennifer because I'm nice like that despite what she says I'm nice like that love you Jennifer okay fabric um this is to die for fabrics her name is Kim she's in Florida that's her Etsy shop to die for fabrics I'm a bit closer because I don't want to screw up my phone right now I got this color in two counts, 14 Ada. Some people call it I Ada. I don't, I don't get that, whatever. Ada, like I call which out, which out. And people are like, am I saying that right? I call it which out. You call it whatever you want. Got it in 28 count linen and 14 count Ada. Who are you talking to, Sila? I'm right here. She thinks I'm talking to her. Great. This fabric is beautiful. Uh, she used two dyes. I, I don't know if she did it for the first time with the two dyes. For the first time in forever, Kim used two dyes. Okay. But it, it's crazy. It's crazy cool. Hi, Sila. I don't know if you heard the jingle. She just came running upstairs. Did you hear me singing? I wasn't singing to you this time, I promise. She's like, thank God. But I thought it would look really cool for some kind of mermaid, like one of the smaller mermaids of Nora's or um, a mermaid of Karen's. But that's it on 28, and here it is on 14 because Lori felt the need to enhance, is feeling the need to enhance her 14 count and 16 count 
um, Ada stash. Notice I did not say 18. Just 14 and 16, por favor. But really, really, really pretty. It, this is natural light. I don't have the over the um, overhead light on right now to really kind of show you. Maybe if I could turn it on, I don't know if it's going to make a difference or not. But that's that's pretty close to what that color looks like. All right, come on, light. Oh, see, yeah, I didn't really add much to it, but I kind of got the light to the side, but you get the gist. If you want to see it full front edge, God, that sounds wrong. If you want to see a full frontal, that sounds really, really wrong. So sorry. If you want to see that, all the, I kind of even stop. If you want to see the full thing, leave comments below. I'll show it next week for the love of Mary. See Liz behind me wondering what in the hell I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk. How does Lori stitch? And sorry, yep, I'm drinking a cup of cream with some coffee. Oodle lolly, love it. This ought to be really interesting. Talking 50 miles an hour with just coffee on me. All right. So I get my little stuff supplies around. And now we're going to talk about how does, you know, Lori do what Lori does. I did print this off off of the interwebs to give you an idea of some of the stitches that I will cover. Some of these I just don't do, like two diagonal half stitches. Usually there's a back stitch running in between these, okay? And I do not do it like this. If there's no back stitching running between these, I may, I might, I might consider this because just two quarter stitches looks really goofy. But very rarely do I come across this without a back stitch in between, okay? If that's the case, I'm not stitching it like this. And I'll go over that. But this is a, an interesting stitch reference diagram that I found on the internet. People have posted it on Facebook before. But there are some really cool stitches in here that will help your skin look better on some of your projects. Or some of the outline that doesn't have uh, outlining to it. Or backstitching to it, I should say. I call these <laughs> I call these squash stitches because that's pretty much what they look like. But they are two vertical half stitches side by side and a vertical half stitch. These are really cool stitches to do. I use these quite frequently when I'm stitching models and Mirabella's because it makes things look so much smoother and it doesn't give it that jagged little edge there. Yep, I think that's a song, isn't it? Oh, jagged little edge, whatever. I'll get back to that. So um, we're going to attempt to do this on camera. This ought to be fun. I just grabbed a scrap piece of 14 count Ada toast from Hobby Lobby. And every time I see the word toast or hear the word toast, I go immediately to Haywood Banks. And if you don't know who Haywood Banks is, he was on the Bob and Tom show forever and uh, as a guest. And he sings just the most hilarious spoofy songs. And one of them is called Toast. And he's singing about how toast is made. Google it. It's so stupid. It's funny. Might be better if you're drunk or something to listen to it. I've never been drunk. But I'm just telling you. It's funny. He's got another one called Wiper Blades. Priceless. My kids are like, Mom, please stop singing that song. It's funny. It's hilarious. So every time I see Toast, I'm like, yay, Toast. And you'll understand if you listen to that song. So I've got my scrap of 14 count Ada. When I first um, get things going, I, of course, I'm ironing, ironing the snot out of my fabric. So what I do on good old standby is I have a amber spray bottle full of purified water. So it's either going to be like distilled or just purified that you would get like, you know, like, I don't know, some purified cheap water that you get at Wally World or something. I pour it in here. Why an amber bottle? Because amber bottles um, help block out UV light. And I know you're like, Lori, it's water. Hello. But um, bacteria, hello. So I don't, uh, yeah, I'm kind of OCD. Have I mentioned that before? Amber bottle for all of my chemical needs, I guess. Um, I was going to label this not water, but I was going to label it, label it like acid for mom's potions to see if the kids would ever notice it. Or my husband would ever notice it. I might change it. It's kind of tempting. So what I do is to get rid of the wrinkles. So if I was to pull this out of the Ada package that Hobby Lobby has that, you know, are hanging 
on their hooks forever and a day because people usually order eight or whatever. I, I don't mind buying this stuff if I need a small piece. I mean, that was an 11 by 18 piece, almost a 12 by 18. So I don't mind buying that Hobby Lobby. Pull it out. And of course, I did not iron this, okay? Because I wanted to show you. You know, this was the original crease mark from the Hooby Luby. I take my water and I spritz the snot out of these crease marks every crease mark and then I let the water soak in and it'll you know it'll bleed it'll do like water does when it soaks up like with a paper towel it just you know it'll expand out but I I do that I let it set for just about a, you know maybe a minute and then I take my iron and I put it on a steam setting we're going to pretend like my little needle case is the iron and um I put it on a steam setting so I push down, hit the steam, lift up, and I keep doing it. And then I, you know, push towards it. And my iron likes to hiss at me. So here you go. Here you go. So, oh, sorry, Sila. Sila's like, what the hell was that? So that's what I do. And 99% of the time, it will get out these really coarse wrinkles. All you have to do is use plain old distilled water, purified water, nothing else. You don't need to hand wash it or submerge the whole thing. It works. I'm telling you, this is how I get the witch out fabric so soft. And I've had the graphic designer say that to me. How do you get this fabric so soft? It's so stiff. It's crazy. And I'm like, well, this is what I do. I just steam iron it real quick and let those fibers relax and take a deep breath. And there you go. So once I get that all set and I'm not going to stitch any particular pattern, guys, I'm just going to show you how I stitch. Okay. Um, I, I hope, I think we all know how to find a center of fabric. I don't start from the center. I count up and I count over because there's something about that left-hand corner that my brain goes start there every single time. So I do that and I use a new needle for every project I do. As you can see, I've got a crap ton of needles in there. Um, have you ever seen a needle under a microscope? If not, Google it. The, the tips of these needles, whether they be blunt tip or sharp tip, they do fray and it will play havoc on your fabric after time. So there you go. So I thread my needle first and FYI, fun fact, when you're pulling your DMC, and I, I'm sorry, I pulled it a little too hard in it. I wrapped it around here. Okay. Obnoxious 947, but it sticks out. So that's why I chose it. You've got two ends here that, and if you didn't know this, two ends here, one on the ribbon, DMC ribbon side and the other one on the number side. Always pull your thread from the number side and it'll come out unknotted every single time. There is a right way and a wrong way to do that. Just pull off of that and it will come off. You're tempted because that one you can see it. Always find that fray end on your number side. Let me pull my sweater up a little bit so it's not, there you go. Another fun fact, listen to me sounding like Paul Blart. Every DMC label has numbers at the top or maybe sometimes at the bottom, depending on how the skein is, okay? You can see that, let me see if it'll bring closer. All right, hold on here. Whoa, there we go. Those numbers are your dye lot. So when they package up the DMC in the boxes of however many they come in and ship them to Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, wherever, that's a dye lot. Even though it's a solid color, it's a dye lot. So when you go into those stores, those chain stores, for the love of Mary, focus, there you go. When you go into those chain stores, be sure and be mindful of that because I have stitched before where I had like 947 or 947 and they were different dye lots and I could tell. Um, anyone with good color eyesight will be able to tell. It's crazy. I've had it happen. I honestly, I've had it happen. And if I told you which pattern I stitched it for, my eye goes to it every single time. And it's like, well, you know, that's not on me. Sip of coffee. Lori's almost out. That's probably a good thing for you. So, mindful. Pull from the number end. 
match up your numbers. Try it next time you go to the store to get floss for whatever you need, even black, even white, um, your, your common 754, your common colors that are used a lot. Check that dial out. All right, that's that. Um, I always have my tools handy, so my scissors, and there went my Krynek. So I have my scissors and my DMC. I have my plug, Jen. Does this give me a free fob? There's Jen's fob from, yeah. She's not gonna give me a free fob. She's gonna charge me, because she's like that. That's, that's true friendship. I love you, but Hey, I need 18 bucks for that fob. She's going to kill me. <laughs> all right, so here we go. So we all know how to separate floss probably, right? Sorry for my wrinkly old man hands. That's what I get for being a firefighter for as many years as I was. So I tap, just a little tap, tap, tappy. So I tap and it splits those ends just like so. And a lot of these things I've learned from Pat Carson. God rest her soul, great lady. I hold it in my fingertips and I just pull it. And every single time, and watch it prove me wrong, but every single time, it will not get knotted. Hold it right there, voila. And the rest of it will not get knotted either. I am a floss licker, don't judge me, I've gone through step programs to break the habit, but you know, it doesn't work. Um, Frank from Mosey and Me, I took a class from him and the first time he saw me lick floss, I <laughs> thought he was gonna come unglued. It, what are you doing, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm getting loading up my needle. Not like that, you're not. I'm like, dude, how else do you do it? Frank was an amazing designer, an amazing person. I loved him and Judy, they were such sweet people. Um, just fun, fun, fun to take a class from him years ago. I just really miss his designing and his quirkiness. Just a fun guy. Anyway, he, he yelled at me for licking my boss. And he, he literally pointed out, you saw his finger, Foss licker, Foss licker. I'm like, what <laughs> are you talking about? You're a Foss licker. Yeah, I'm a Foss licker. All right, so here I go. Mm-hmm. Sometimes even the cats like to help. Are you helping? I wish you could see her behind me. She's helping. She's literally watching me do this video. God love her. Sila Ann, you're a fit. All right. So you could thread your needle the normal way. If you struggle with this eyesight, whatever, as we get older, I'm going to show you a trick that Pat showed me. I do this with Krynik too. Wrap it around your finger, especially with Krynek. I don't do this normally with DMC, so let me get that back into focus. Hello, focus. There we go. Wrap it around your finger. I'm doing this looking through the camera, so bear with me. Okay? Put the eye of the needle over that thread and push as you're scraping that needle back and forth. Look at that. Isn't that the slickest thing? I'm like, Pat Carson, you are a rock star. Every little thing I do that you taught me is unforgettable. And then just pull it through. Ta-da! So if you're a Frank and you don't want to be a frost, floss licker, do it that way. Whatever floats your boat. Find the center of that fabric. We all know the trick. Okay? We fold it. And then we fold it again. Voila! I crease it down the side. Pinch that middle. Give it a little crease here. There you go. Pinch the middle, okay? Now, when you have the fabric that has, there's my middle right there. Bada boom, bada bang. All right. Take that and just stick it in the middle. If you have your fabric that has that, I don't even know what this is called, edging, I can hear my friend's laughing at me right now. I don't know what the hell it's called. It's called non-cross-stitchable stuff, okay? Um, I don't have any, oh, I do. I do on the on the linen. This stuff here, the edging. You know, the stuff that they don't have to, this stuff here. See, that's non-cross-stitchable non stuff, okay? When you have that, and I'm gonna show you real quick. When you have that, you don't count that as part of your counting to fold it in 
and fold it over to get your center. You have to go just underneath that little salvage stuff, like so, okay? Line it up just right, because you can't count that as part of your cross-stitching because you're not cross-stitching on that. And you can't count that as part of your, you know, whatever, two inches or whatever. So as you can see, you know, it's gonna be off. And it's gonna feel weird. But that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna pretty much just ignore this, like it never existed. So if you were to cut it off, which I wouldn't recommend, because it's, you know, holding your stuff in. But put that up like so. That's how you're going to line that up if you have that salvage. If you don't, you're going to line it up. Because I have no salvage, you're going to line it up and fold it corner to corner. Right, Celo? I wish you guys could see her. I wish I could flip the phone. She is a hoot. She's hanging over my couch watching everything I do. Right, baby girl? Right? All right, get her done. All right. So for those that start in the middle, start in the middle. Whatever floats your boat. For those that don't, you're going to count up from wherever I set the stitch. So if it's up 10 and then it's over, I count that middle stitch. So I'm going to go count it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then I count this stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then start. Always count going up and going over, including that set stitch. So let's zoom back out. I'm going to try and show you, just basically without actually counting and setting, how I stitch. Okay? I'm just going to turn this fabric, whatever. I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible. I might cut this just because. I usually put this in a Q-snap. I'm not a hoop person. Whatever makes you happy, do it. I actually started stitching in hand, and it was crazy. Sorry, I'm going to move my phone. Sila, leave your brother alone, for crying out loud. I started stitching in hand because I didn't like a hoop and there was no other option. And I'm really sad to say that I'm old enough to be around at the birth of a Q-snap. Wow. Fossil. Okay. Well, whatever. All right. I start my thread with a loop method. As you probably gathered the way I threaded it because the two loose ends are there. I start using the loop method. It's an easy way to start stitching and not having all of those gazillion tails hanging on the back of your thread. So as easy as one, two, three, we're gonna do this. Maybe. <laughs> I guess that bear with me, this is not fun. I'm trying to do it through a phone. I'm gonna try and zoom in as best as I can so you can see how I do this. All right. So just come up, left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. Go back stitching. If you can see my cats right now. Sila, stop sucker punching Loki. Come on now. He's just minding his own business. Jeez Louise, such a bratty little sister. Left to right, left to right, left to right. Cross back, right to left, right to left. So left to right, left. To right, left to right. Come back up, right to left, right to left, right to left. Easy peasy, chucky cheesy. However, I don't stab stitch. I sew stitch. So I'm going to sink that first stitch. And I apologize, the cats are being really distracting right now. If you two, two don't knock it off, I'm putting you each in a corner. Come on. Mom's trying to do things here. Jeez. All right. Get you back here so you can see how that loop method is anchored. All right. See that? Got your little loop. Go through it. Pull it. There you go. Now, what I do is I take this and I hold it kind of down with my finger. Like so. All right, I got to cut this fabric. It's just, I got to cut it. 
because it's flopping all over the place. And it's just enough to make ornament cut out of anyway. Oh, and there's a hiss. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Loki. I know. She's being a turd. Because cat. My life. Okay. Oh, yes. Now I can hold it better. Okay. For the purpose being served. All right. So when I sew stitch, I get that first stitch anchored, okay? And sorry for the roller coaster ride of me moving my hands all over the place. I told you I'm trying to get used to this stuff. I'm gonna come up again, okay? Now I'm just gonna sew stitch across to show you how I do it. I do railroad my stitches, top and bottom. I will explain that in a second. Go down. This is how I stitch, people. It's so easy. I sew stitch, okay? Now, I've gotten to the point where railroad stitching, I could do it in my sleep. Just by eyeballing it and not having to split the threads every single time. I memorize the pattern of how many go across, and I go at it. I'm trying to do this. Okay. There we go. All right, and I got a little knot. Okay. Voila, I sew stitch. The second thing I do is, when I go back, is I, I sew stitch the same way. So I just go down and I go over. Give me one second, brief pause. I'll be right back. You can eyeball my stitches. All right. I thought I heard somebody at the back door. Even the cats heard something, so I don't know what that was about. There's no one at my back door. Thank goodness. All right. So, voila. Same way. Boom. 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 And I can hear it, but Lori, how do you get your stitches to lay so flat? Here's what I do. I, I am eyeballing my railroad stitching right now, okay? It's because I've done it for so long, and I know how the stitches are supposed to lay. But I'm going to show you how to railroad stitch here. If you're a stick and stabber, um, that's great. I have no problems with it. I just can't, I can't stitch like that. I, when I was little, I used, uh, my mom taught me how to embroidery. And that's how I used to do it. And it used to drive her nuts. But she's like, you're not getting your stitching, your tension right. You get used to it after time. And getting the tension right. You do whatever works for you. This is what works for me. Okay, I'm going to go down a couple stitches here. Just ignore that. Me carrying that thread. I don't ever... Oh, God, I can hear Pat Carson right now chewing me out because I want more than two. Railroad stitching is fun. Okay, um, just let's just pretend like I started from scratch. All right, and there's my stitches. So, sti so stitching. Blech. Okay. Wow. Railroad stitching is really easy. Like I said, once you get the the rhythmic notion of it down, it's not hard, okay? You want to make sure that what's what railroad stitching does, let me back up just a little bit. What it does is it makes your threads lay side by side, okay? Just like here. You can see my threads side by side. Boom, boom. Okay? They're not twisted like this. All right, I'm doing this on purpose, mind you. Okay, they're not twisted like that. You want them side by side. The more your threads are side by side, the neater, the nicer your stitches will lay. I will show you. I'm not perfect, but I will show you, okay? Um, you can tell a difference when railroad stitching. I had one of my stitchy friends contact me. She goes, 
showed me how to railroad stitch again. So I, I talked her through it and she sent me, I don't know, a message um, a few months ago. And she said, railroad stitching has made a big difference. I can't thank you enough. And that meant a lot to me because I helped a stitcher out. That is railroad stitching, okay? All of that is railroad stitching. All of this and all of it. I, I railroad stitch all my stitches. But it, just to show you, like with tweeting, that's another beast. How you get one thread laying on the bottom and the other thread laying on the top is by railroad stitching. So it doesn't, you know, the yellow's not on the top and then the yellow's on the bottom. It won't, it won't twist. So yeah, I needed to do that with my hand to show you, twist. So railroad stitching makes a big difference, okay? It makes a big difference with how the stitches are gonna lay, how the color's gonna pop out, all of it, okay? So there is that beast. So with railroad stitching, the, th the key with it is, is to make sure that those threads are parallel to each other. So as you can see here, it kind of twisted down. So a quick rule of thumb, what I do is I just separate them immediately. To railroad stitch, the correct way to do this, <laughs> it's not Lori's way where she eyeballs it now because she's gotten so mindless at it. You're gonna take the needle, you're gonna go to the base of your thread and you're gonna split it. And put your sink your needle in between those two threads like so, okay? I'm gonna stab stitch to show you because a majority of you are stabbers. That sounds really, really bad. If you're a stabber, I don't wanna know about it, okay? And, and not in the cross stitch consent. But if you're married and you have kids, I understand why you would be. So when you pull it down gently to show you, those threads are side by side. Ta-da! Same thing. See how slow it takes me to stab stitch? I can't do it. I, I mean, I can do it, but I, I don't normally do it. So I'm going to come up. Now see, because I railroad stitched that first one, my threads already came up side by side. This is how I cheat, guys. This is how I do this. This is how I cheat. So I know that that's going to go down parallel already because it already is parallel side by side. See, look at that. Boom. I do railroad both top and bottom legs of the stitch because if your bottom leg is crooked, your top leg won't lay straight. So this one's kind of cattywampus. Wampus? Cattywampus. Good Lord. Again, split the thread. Make sure it's going to lay straight. If you don't think it is, split it with your needle. Ta-da! Now let me show you how I do it with sew stitch. Boom. That's a beautiful thing. Same here. I already know it's side by side. You just got to keep an eye on what you're doing. That's all. Voila. Boom. It went side by side. So I see this one's a little crooked. And that's okay. It's going to do that. If you only railroad stitch the top leg, hey, it's your prerogative, whatever you want to do. Um, but when you do both legs, as you can see, the, the toast colored fabric, and sometimes I take my needle and just move that thread a little bit. The toast colored fabric isn't showing when you railroad both. As you can see, because this is, I'll give you five guesses what this fabric is. This one right here, right here. Whimsical winter. Good guess. Yay, you won a prize of getting to listen to me drone on. All right. I, because I railroad stitch both top and bottom, that's the look I get. And none of the fabric is coming through. There you go. I'm not saying I'm perfect, folks. I just am, my OCD comes to benefit me when I stitch. Okay. So there that is. Railroad stitching and my sew stitch, how I do it so fast. All right, now I'm gonna try and show you on Ada. That's the full cross stitch, obviously, right? Pretty, pretty sense, makes sense, I guess. Makes, yeah, we're good. Um, when it comes to Ada, it's easier to do like three quarter stitches and quarter stitches on 
even weave or linen because of all of the threads, right? And Ada, and I chose to do this on Ada because, let me turn the light on, maybe I can see better. Maybe a little bit better. On Ada, sorry, you might get the reflection of the light. I hope not. Ada, you gotta split threads. It's like splitting hairs. And it can be tough. And you know, you oh, but Lori, I want my stitches to look really nice. Okay, well, we're gonna try this, okay? So let's say it's on the, you know, the quarter stitch is the charted for the lower right-hand side. And this is just because this is the easiest place my thread was coming up. So with Ada, we just wanna make sure, sorry, that we find that middle medium and split that thread. Sometimes it gives, you know, it gives easily, and then sometimes it's like putting a nail in a piece of wood. It really depends on how stiff the cloth is. It's like, for the love of Mary. So again, the other thing you wanna make sure is that leg, even though you're not crossing it with anything, you wanna make sure that that leg is railroad because it will cover and fill that lower portion of that square. Now to complete like a diagonal half stitch, you're gonna come up and just think of it as coloring. You're gonna come up the corner and it doesn't matter, honestly, if you come up here or if you come up here. My mind always goes to the lower left because that's how I make my first legs on my cross stitch. If you make your first cross stitch leg from the right down to the left, then do it that way, whatever works for you. But you can see that this little leg isn't gonna lay straight because it's a quarter stitch and it's gonna be cantankerous. So I'm gonna split that thread, railroad it, and lay it down. Oh, DMC, you dirty bird. Lay it down. Ta-da. You don't wanna to pull too tight. You don't want it too loose. You want it just right, baby bear. Beautiful little three-quarter stitch. Ta-da. The next thing I wanna show you is a vertical half stitch. I call them squash stitches. This is a great stitch to use when you're doing skin. Now I made a partial copy of my Lilith, so all of you copyright people out there don't have a cow. There's no way you're gonna be able to stitch the whole damn mermaid on this copy, okay? But I wanted to show you how tricky sometimes Mirabella's can be with this. I say Mirabella. I've heard people call it Mirabella or Mirabella. I, whatever, Mirabella. I've said it Mirabella's for years like that. Now I'm not changing it. All right. So stitches like this. There's your quarter stitch. The very first stitch that I just did on that Ada, okay? This stitch here, you can kind of see, and I'm gonna try and zoom in on it, maybe, maybe not, okay. You can see here that this stitch is complicated, okay? That definitely is a quarter stitch. When I first do these, um, whether they be for my own personal use or for, you know, to, for which out, I'm looking at how the skin is laid out. How do I want this skin to run smooth? And it really depends on the stitches that I use, okay? So, this stitch here is definitely a quarter, or a, yeah, a quarter stitch, okay? Lower left quarter stitch. This stitch here is complicated. Now I've seen a lot of people use just a full blown stitch on this. However, you've got back stitching right there that's gonna go over that full stitch and that full stitch is gonna bleed over from this back stitch. So you're gonna have skin and it's gonna like fall over the back stitch. So it, it doesn't look clean. I don't know how else to put that. If that's how you do it, I'm not judging. I'm just telling you this is how Lori Mines work. And mind, I only, I only have one and I barely have that sometime. So this is how I do it, okay? Same with this one here. This one would be a great one for horizontal stitch. Right off the bat, boom, horizontal stitch. Boom. I even use a horizontal stitch and a quarter stitch all in the same. Horizontal stitch here. Boom, boom. And then a quarter stitch here in the corner. So to blow it up, 
Oh God, Lori, that's an awful X. You're trying to do this on coffee. So to blow it up, this guy here, okay? I'm gonna do a horizontal stitch and then I'm gonna do a quarter stitch because that back stitching falls kind of cattywampus like right in here. It's really weird how this works. This is how I do it. So I'll show you here. Same with this chin. This would get a horizontal stitch here. This would get a three quarter stitch here. This would get a horizontal stitch because it's not a full blown half stitch. Can you see that? That's not a full blown half stitch here. Okay. That's not a half stitch. That's a horizontal stitch. This is a whole stitch. It's crazy how this charting works sometimes. Quarter stitch, quarter stitch, three quarter stitch, horizontal stitch. Okay, nutsy. So, to do a horizontal stitch, and we're gonna try this on Ada. And get my camera so it's focused out here. Maybe. All right. Yay! There we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. A horizontal stitch can be done in a few different ways, okay? Think of it as taking a full cross stitch and squishing it. You're gonna take your needle up. You're gonna go halfway in between where your hole is on the top right there. Halfway in between, okay? Go down. Same thing, halfway in between. Voila, okay? I did not get another thing of floss to show you the differentiation as to how it could work. But just to show you how to do the stitches. You can play with it on your own. Uh, it, it works, okay? There is a nice horizontal stitch on a full cross stitch, okay? Now, if you got one of those complicated little symbols let me show you a good one to use here. So say you got a, you know, quarter stitch, whatever. The best way to do it to shape the skin, you can do it this way. You can also come up and do it this way. So always start from that lower left. Okay. You can go to the upper right. There you go, lower left. And why I like doing my Mirabella's on even weave or linen is so I don't get this split stitch effect because when you split Ada, the split bleeds over into the other square. I, granted, you're probably gonna cross stitch over that or back stitch where it wouldn't be so noticeable, but again, my head goes places someplace that are scary, so. And there is a top horizontal stitch. Voila. It makes all the difference in the world stitching skin. Let me show you. On my Lilith, whom I just, I really need to get her to gel. Okay, look at the difference. Let me see if I can. Right here. I did a horizontal stitch. I should have put a quarter stitch there to fill it in, but her I think it, it I took it, I may have taken it out because it made her nose look really chunky. And again, you gotta play with it. But here's a quarter stitch, three quarter stitch, three quarter stitch to get that nose to just pop right up. Here I did a, a horizontal stitch. Okay, same here, three quarter stitch, quarter stitch, three quarter stitch, there's a horizontal stitch. So as you look at it side by side, you can kind of, let me pull the paper here. You can kind of maybe, depending on how well I fold the paper, really well, Mary. 
There we go. Take a screenshot. I don't care. <laughs> Do it. Report me. See how her little chin is pointed on the pattern and her little nose is pointed on the pattern? But you see how the nose, the back stitch bled over a full stitch? I did not do a full stitch there because I did not like how it bled over. I wanted her nose to have definition. I didn't want background noise, if you will. So I literally take my patterns and I analyze them before I dig into them, okay? Things like whenever you get a pattern that has something like this, Okay, it has a quarter stitch and a, um, arcs. they call them half stitches, okay? This is a quarter stitch and a quarter stitch. But you have no back stitching in between. It is a half stitch. Very rarely do I come across these in my stitching, but it's really, and again, it's hard to do it with, with two-tone, without two-tone, excuse me. But you do the same as you would a three-quarter stitch, okay? Voila. All right, but then you do it the same way. On the opposite side. And what this does is it fills in the blanks where there's no back stitching. Now granted, you do this with two-tone, not the same color, because Lori's a boob and didn't get a contrasting color for you to see how it comes out. But you can try it on your own in how you do this. Okay? I have faith in you. All right. So it will make a contrasting difference with two different threads okay but it splits the difference here splits the difference this is a diagonal half stitch again nine times out of ten there is a back stitch here to smooth it out and to make it look different one exception I did when I stitched this model for Karen okay this is my Sila Yep, pirate princess. She is a pirate kitty. The child steals so much crap. <laughs> and she blips a lot. So her little tongue is out because she blips. When I stitched this for Karen, I left this unintentionally unsmoothed because it was a poof tail. I left it raw. So it was edgy because that was Sila. It's edgy, okay? Um... But it, I, I did it unsmoothing for a purpose, so it gave her poof, or poof tail. All of it's poofed. So there's that. So again, I, I look at the pattern. I'm like, yeah, okay, this works. And Karen loved it the way it was, so we ran with it. So there you go. Same with, you know, again, looking at a pattern of Lilith. This here. Full stitch, full stitch, three-quarter stitch, horizontal stitch. Now, even though there's not a symbol here, look how the back stitch flows, okay? So you're going to come up here, and you're going to go down here. Long stitches are acceptable. Long stitches are, I prefer them when you're doing this sort of stuff because... It smooth things out, okay? Sometimes you have to couch down a thread, that's fine, but it smooths and it gives her that flowing look of finished type of thing. All right. You all know how to end threads. I don't need to show you that. Um, basically, I showed you how I sew stitched and how quick I am at doing that. I uh, don't stab stitch unless I absolutely have to stab stitch, but that's that. Um, I will leave this, let me cut this off just because I'm probably going to pull this out. Um, Krynik is another beast. 
And I can talk about that real quick because we're going close to an hour here. But Krynik is a different beast. Uh, I If a pattern calls for a number eight thread or a number eight Krynik, uh, uh, hell no, I'm not using that. I'll switch to four. Um, Krynik is amazing because usually they carry the same type of colors in all thread count. And if they don't, you know, there's a reason for that. But nine times out of 10, Krynik will have number four braid and number eight braid and 12 braid and so on and so on. Anything 14, 32, um, 28, 16, anything like that, I go with number four braid. 18 count, I've used number four braid on and, it, and it's, it's fine, but I prefer it laying better on 16 or 14 count for Ada. Same with even weave 32 and 28 count. Anything smaller than that, I'm rethinking my choices because it's a braid. I know a, a Mirabella, the Santa, that the one that's out of print now, um, the Magic Santa or whatever, that's got all those goofy geometrical shapes to it, initially called for number eight braid. And I have a pattern, but I never did it because I did not want to use number eight braid. And that was years ago when it first came out. Um, so I switch everything to four. I load my thread the same way I load with the finger thing that uh, Pat showed me because it's just easier. And floss licking does not agree with this method. So here you go. Voila, maybe. It's gonna be kind of cantankerous today. Same thing, look at that. Ooh, thank you, Pat Carson. Practice it, guys. I'm telling you, I swear by this. Because Krynik, and especially like blending filament, oh my God, that stuff's a nightmare. So there you go. It just, it works. So you just got to pull it all the way through. Look at that. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't, I don't want to cut it because Krynik is like my precious. And if I'm not going to use it, I don't want to cut it. So there's that. Uh, what else, guys? Throw me a bone here. What else do you want? Not like that you could talk to me, but what else would you like for me to show you? I showed you the basics of how I cross stitch, how I cross stitch fast, and the railroad stitching is a must. Um, you can see my little stitches pop out. Why I railroad stitch? So the fabric color doesn't come through and things lay nicely the way they do. Um, I, I plan on showing some beading and bugle beads, things like that crystal people that doesn't like me. I don't, she doesn't have any bugles on her, but she has these geometric, I don't, rondelles. I don't know what those are called, but I can show you how I attach those bad boys. Um, you know, how I attach treasures like this. Okay, there's a couple different ways to do it. There's no, hey, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. No, you don't. You do it the way that you want to do it, that works for you, that looks good for you. Um, I'll be honest, I flipped through some tube and was watching some folks do it. And it's like, this is how it's done. This is how you do it. This is how you have to do it. Nope, <laughs> and I've been doing it wrong my whole career stitching. Um, I'm not saying my way is perfect, it's not, but it's not, uh, this isn't an intimidation shame game here. This is a, this is how I do it. And if you wanna learn how I do it, so it benefits you, fantastic. If you don't, and you're like, Lori, that's not gonna work for me. Um, you know, I, I've tried. I appreciate you showing me how quickly you stitch. That's not going to work for me. Okay, then go back to the way you were doing it because that works for you. And I'm glad that works for you. Um, that doesn't work for me. So there you go. But I will um, address in the next two, you know, maybe down the road on beading. Um, Karen has actually asked me how to show how to attach bugle beads. That's fun. I would do just specifically like a bead. Like this is how this bead's done and this bead's done. Like these... I think these are numbers, these are six or eights. I can't remember how this is done. You know, this is how I do it. So they're secure on there. So those suckers aren't moving. 
So until next time, this is how, this is how I do it. This is how I stitch. That's how I stitch quickly with less, you know, twisting. Um, I cut that. That's why that's loose. I will, the one thing I did not say real quick is that always make sure that you drop your needle so it untwists. If you railroad stitch both top and bottom legs, chances are you're not going to have to drop your needle as much as you normally do. I find that I don't have to drop my needle half as much. And when you do railroad stitch, your tails match up. You know how sometimes when you stitch and, you know, if you're not dropping your needle or you do drop your needle and let's just say sometimes it winds up being like this. Can you see that I, I did there? So sometimes your threads are way off. That's because your thread is uneven and it's laying uneven on your fabric. So just keep that in mind. That's why I railroad. Because when I start out with this thread, like so, that little sucker, okay? If I start out with this thread like this, this is two threads side by side, and trying to zoom in there, sorry guys. I started out with two threads side by side. When I go to cut it, like I did here, you're gonna be shocked at yourself. Your two threads are still gonna be side by side if you railroad. You're not gonna have, you're gonna have an easier time tucking in your, your tails. So that's that little tidbit too. So that's how Lori does things. Um, if you can think of anything else that you'd like for me to show besides beading, which will come in the future, just drop me a note, drop me a like, let me know you're breathing, that you're not just, you know, hey, I subscribed and I'm never going to watch her again because she's, you know, just whatever. Um, leave comments. I love how YouTube says, oh, you have 1,050 subscribers, and then you go look again, you're like down to 140, and I'm like, oh, I pissed somebody off. <laughs> <laughs> whatever all right guys it's good to talk with you as always i will be in touch um i am going back to work tomorrow after a six month hiatus uh, i'm going to try a couple days a week to see how frankenfoot does i have the most incredible bosses i love them both dearly they're great people and um i i'm coming back i jokingly said as a new employee so uh it's going to be fun a couple days a week to see how we do to, to get this back in order. So in the meantime, happy stitching, all of that stuff. Seela wants food. You get to look at my Lilith. Look at her on that rock. Are you getting seasick yet? All right. Okay, guys, take care, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.